Hi, this is Pat, and I've been an acrylic painter now for probably 20 years. I was an oil painter for maybe 30 years. I didn't count, but something like that. And when I first went to acrylic paints because I became allergic to um, oil paints, I couldn't, I couldn't do it because everything dried so fast for me. And I did it for a while. And then one of my students came from another class, and she had something called a Masterson palette. It looks like this. Let me show you. See how it's like that? Can you see that? And she had not used her paints for two months. And when she put, took the lid off, all the paints were still wet. And it was kind of like, oh my goodness, this is just what I need and what I could tell all my students about. So I went right out and bought that. But when I first brought it home, I'm, uh, it takes me a while to understand things. So I purchased it and here it is. And it, it's, for some of you, it'll be real easy. You'll read it and you'll say, oh yeah, I know just what to do. But some of us, like myself, take a um, little practicing. And then in the studio now, when the students come and they have one, I say, bring it in and we're gonna do it together inside the studio. Cause then I can show them what to do. We have a microwave in there and that's what we're gonna use. So uh, let me tell you what we're gonna do. So you get one sheet and what I do is I fold it like this and like this and I put it in water. S this container fits perfectly in my microwave and I put it, oh, a little less than halfway up and I fold it and when I put it in you have to push it way down in like that. Make sure it's submerged as much as possible. You can use a different container but just make sure it's all covered and then you're going to put it into the microwave for 10 minutes. So when you take it out of the microwave um, it's pretty hot. So you have to be very careful carrying it wherever you're going to put it down, like where your work area is for taking it out. And sometimes I'll just grab a little corner if I can and hold it up and let it drip first. Oops, I forgot a step. Just a minute, you guys. What we need to do is wet our paper towels. Don't worry about that. That'll be fine. So we're going to take, take some wet paper towels. So I don't know if you can see this. We're going to wet the paper towel and squeeze the water out. See, um... This is kind of important. Depending on how much I squeeze, see I'm still getting more water. If I squeeze it all out, well now it's going to be dry too quick. So I'm going to wet it again and open it up a little bit. And then I'm going to squeeze it, but I'm not going to squeeze it so much. Oh, about like that. So now there's still a lot of water in it. And I'm going to put it in to the Masterson palette. I don't know if this is in the way. Can you see that? So I'm going to put it in there. This is in lieu of having the, the yellow sponge that they sell. Masterson people, they sell the yellow sponge. But what happens is you're not supposed to bleach it or use vinegar or use anything to clean it. And if it stays in a warm place, it's going to get mildewy. This way you have paper towels and, and you can just change the paper towels. But otherwise your sponge, I threw it in the washing machine, you weren't supposed to do that either. But I, I just didn't like looking and smelling that smell. But if you use paper towels, you can just in the middle, maybe in, I don't know, a month, you can take them out and put new ones in if you want to. So this is what you're going to do. Just keep wetting a whole bunch and I'm going to have three layers of paper towels everywhere. One of the things that I found really helps to keep all the paint nice and wet is I sometimes will double over. I use Bounty paper towels. So Bounty I think is the best because it's so, it just works well. I double it over a little bit like that and put that on the edges. Even with the other three layers in the middle, by doing that, then my paints stay nice and wet and juicy for weeks. You'll be so surprised if you haven't used it before. So now I'm ready to take my paper out and it's now it's cool. So I'm going to pick it up and still shake it off a little. Open it up and lay it down. The next thing you have to do is you have to wipe it down with a paper towel because it's really, really too wet. If your paints, um, if your paper towels are too wet and you, and you kind of pick it up to go do something, the paint will slide around. So it's kind of like it might be trial and error trying to find the exact right amount of moisture in the paper towel when you're first new, but these tips should help. So see, this it looks dry. It's not all shiny right now, and I can squirt my paint out. And that's a whole subject unto itself. Let me put this up here for a minute. Whoops. And I wanted to show you, I have two of them. Actually, I have more than two. <laughs> but this one, the top on this one 
works really pretty good. But sometimes, and it seems like if you get it in the winter time, the tops don't go on as well. I'll show you that in just a minute. But now let's say you've been painting away and you have this paint. Now you're going to be getting a new yellow or a new red or a new blue because I suggest the primary colors mostly. You can just take a pep paper towel and you can wet it down and you can wipe that off. The color will stay on the paper towel, I mean <laughs> on the palette, but it's still nice and moist. So I could put another color on that. And the more that that has a little bit of color, probably the better because then it's not bright white when you mix your colors. Sometimes the bright white throws off what you, th what you think you got for a color. And now, see it's still coming off? But if I keep doing it, it'll come off real nice. One of the tips that they give you on the Masterson palette paper is that they suggest that if it seems like it's too big for your palette, you can cut it down. Well, that would be nice, except I, I laid it in there and said, oh, it is, and I cut it, but didn't realize it shrunk. So <laughs> you might not want to cut it right away. It's good to save those big the big paper in case you want to use a small one because sometimes I use one of their palettes this is a Masterson small palette and I sometimes will use this size and you can cut that paper down if you want to or buy them already cut oh yeah I wanted to tell you um, it's only twenty dollars to buy this palette and it's ten dollars to get 30 pieces of paper that will last you forever especially if you're good about wiping in between your see that's nice and moist so I can still use that this one for me would be way too small if you do little tiny five by seven paintings maybe this would be okay for you or it could be a place to store your paint but otherwise I don't think I'd use it <laughs> well let's say you can't afford this right now and you've been using your paper plates now some of you by now have already figured out that you need to use a spray bottle so if you spritz a little bit, put the paint out, and then spritz again, well, not too close, you know, choo, choo, like that, that would help you keep your paint wet while you're working. If you're going to go out, this size fits great into a baggie. So if you need to, and you need to go have lunch or something, put this in a baggie, and it'll stay nice and moist for you. But ideally, if you get this, and you could store it for the longest time, I stored it in the cellar stairs, and before that, I tried to store it in the refrigerator, but my husband didn't like that so much, having the paint. It was kind of big, too, and he's the cook, so he didn't like that. So I understand. And in the summertime, I don't ever leave it in the sun, and I wouldn't leave it in the car. So that I hope that those little tips help you. Oh, by the way, I wanted to also show you about putting the lid on when you're done painting, because for some people, they think it's on, but it's not on, and they... They just don't have, they have trouble. So here we go. If you put this in the corner right there and you push down, sometimes for some people you'd have to push down from the top like this and press and press and press and press. Now I'm going to have it not work out someplace. All right. So now when you look at that edge, see how that goes up a little bit right there. That means it's not on there. And notice how I'm not going like that. <laughs> you, you have to keep it flat or your paint might slide around. So put it back down on the surface. Give it a good... <clears throat> you've got to use muscles sometimes. All the way around. And sometimes you're going to get a lid. Let me show you the next lid. So that's on there nice. Oopsie daisy, look. See, it's up right there. So I would have to make sure I push that down. That seals it so that the no air gets in, and that's why it stays fresh for so long. All right, so I'm going to whip this one off. Yeah, sure. Whip it off. Keep it flat all the time. And I'm going to show you how this one doesn't work as easily. It's an older one, but it's caving in, but that's okay. When you have one that doesn't fit, sometimes when you get the corner on there, sometimes you have to bow it up like that a little bit and get that corner on. Then you're going to push it down. And then the last, this corner, these two corners, you have to bow it up again. I don't know if you call that word bowing, but pull it up a little. Then look at this. I don't think I'm in there. There. Ooh, muscles. All right. So that will help you guys. That's one of those wonderful tips. All right. Thank you. Bye.